Um, just like you, we're all having to find different ways of, uh, of living and working at the moment. Um, and this is the first time I've ever done a virtual assembly. Uh, so you'll need to excuse me if I make lots of mistakes. Uh, hopefully over the next couple of weeks, uh, I'll be able to fine tune things and it'll work a little bit better. So stick with me if I make some mistakes. Uh, and if you see me looking down the way, it's because I have got my notes in front of me. So I'll keep looking at my notes all the way through. Uh, it'd be great, I can see lots of you are putting messages on already. Uh, and I'm a typical man, so I can't multitask. Uh, I can't read your comments um, and do the assembly. So I'll read them later on, but please do add your comments below. It's great to see so many of you getting involved. Um, and it's also good to see who's online with us as well. So throughout the assembly, please, please, please add in lots of notes and comments um, so everybody else can join in and see you. Just like our assemblies in school, I have got something I wanna share with you all this morning and a couple of announcements um, at the very, very end. And I've also got a little sneaky challenge for um, all the boys and girls out there too. Uh, I'm gonna be asking you to do something um, later on today. So stick with me uh, for the next 20 minutes or so and uh, that challenge is coming at the end. So here's my special message. I've got some letters uh, that I wanna share with you. Um, I'm hoping that you can see these. Uh, that's one letter. It should be the letter C if I've got it the right way around. Another letter is the letter A. I think I've got this one back to front, so you're gonna to have to work with me on this one. But if I turn it the other way, you ain't gonna see it. But it's an L. And my last letter is the letter M. If you can work out what word that spells, just type it below. So we have the letter C. We have the letter A. We had the letter L, although it's back to front, and we had the letter M. Just write that word in the notes and let me see if anybody can work out what word that is I'm talking about this morning. Come on. Hi, Richard Scott. Yay! I think that's Miss Natalia was the first in. The word is calm. The word is calm. And I'm going to talk about that word this morning a little bit more. See, we're used to life staying pretty much the same, uh, doing the same things from day to day, going to the same sorts of places. And we often see the same sorts of people. Well done, Miss Blackman. Um, but that at the moment has changed because of all of the coronavirus um, that's going on. And we're all having to get used to life being very, very different. It's the new normal and it'll be the new normal for the next few weeks at least. It's the same for everyone. And so we're all getting used to this together. And doing this, getting used to this new way of living in a calm way will help everyone to get used to it more quickly. It'll also help everyone to feel less worried. And so each of those letters stands for something. So let's start with the letter C. Routines. C stands for creating new routines. Routines, you see, help us to, to feel safe. Usually we don't even notice them and we often take those routines for granted. But we really miss the routines when they're gone. Making new routines will be very important over the coming days and weeks. They become, I guess they become the new normal. And they will become the new normal very quickly. What are the new routines that you are starting to notice? We've been away for school for two weeks and I'm sure that over the past two weeks, lots of things in your day-to-day -day routine is changing. So what are those new routines for you in your homes? Some celebrities are helping with exercise, stories, cookery lessons online, all these things happening at different times of the day. I wonder if you can use any of these things to help you create new routines as well as seeing a familiar face and trying something new. Some teachers I know are already starting to send you work home um, so that you can do your school lessons at home. I wonder if you could do these at the same time of the day that maybe you used to do them in school. But if you can't, don't worry about that. Try and create a routine for yourself that works in your home. Try and do your lessons at the same time each day, whatever time that might be because that routine is important. Some friends and relatives are using FaceTime and other ways to be in touch. 
so that they can still see their friends, see their family and hear from them. Can you arrange a time to meet up on a regular basis with your friends, whether it's through Zoom or through Facebook or Messenger or one of those other social media platforms out there? Can you build that into your new routine? Boys and girls, mealtimes and bedtimes, the really important part of everybody's routine, especially at a time like this. It's tempting to say that they don't really matter so much when you haven't got to go to school every day. But actually, they're more important than ever. Making sure that we eat healthily and that we get enough sleep is vital to keeping us healthy and happy. So when you're looking at your new routines and you're thinking about where you're going to put your schoolwork and you're thinking about when you're going to keep in touch with your family and friends, please, 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 don't forget that bedtime and those meal times and trying to keep them regular are so important. Some families are using timers as a fun way to make sure they stick to their new routines and they move to a different activity or even a different room sometimes or into the garden. Have you got something that could help you set the times for your day? I know that some of you probably have something like Alexa. That's a nice way of keeping you on on time and sorting out the routine for your day. Or maybe you've got an alarm clock that you can just set yourself to say, I'm going to do half an hour of my work at this time every day and the alarm clock helps to remind you. Maybe you have a phone or a kitchen buzzer or something else. But have you got something that can help you to organize and structure your day? That routine, creating that new routine is important. Of course, and I'm going to say this as well, make sure you structure in lots and lots of unstructured time as well. This is a time to let your imaginations lead the way. There's an opportunity here for you to do things that you might not normally get a chance to do every day. Um, maybe pop into the garden and create dens or other worlds or create an adventure in the, in the garden. There's a lot less pressure now to tidy up. So make the most of it. See it as an opportunity. Create yourself that new routine and try to stick to that each day. It does help us if we do set things at set times in the day because it gives us something to look forward to. It also makes sure we do different types of things throughout the course of the day. It helps us to do the things we are less keen on, but we need to do as well. And it keeps us busy. So we have less time to focus on all those other worries that we have at the moment. So I come back to what I said at the beginning. What does your new routine look like? And if you haven't decided yet, maybe you need to sit down with your family and think about how we're going to structure our days. Maybe you could make something to put on the fridge that helps to organise that. So that's my letter C. My letter A, don't worry, they're not all as big as the C. My letter A, calm, letter A, ask a grown-up. If you've got any questions or worries, it helps to share them with a parent or another grown-up. Or maybe you're an older brother or sister. They may not have all the answers, but knowing someone cares and is listening to us is often the most important thing when we have something that's bothering us. If worries are going around and around and around in your head, then sometimes writing them down or drawing them can help. Some children I know have even found a help from, to, for them to put them in what they call a, like a, a worry box, like a post box. And they put all their worries into the worry box. And then sometimes they'll give them to the adult to look after. And that helps them to just deal with some of the worries they've got in their head. If worries are taking over, then use a timer to give maybe yourself like a worry 10 minutes or a worry five minutes. And then after that, we draw a line under our worries and we start to think about all the happy, positive things. One of the most helpful ways of managing your worries is to sort them into things that you can and you can't do things about. With the coronavirus going around, there's lots that we can't control. But you can wash your hands at the recommended times. You can cough or sneeze into an elbow. You can keep a safe space from other people. You can stay indoors when you're asked to stay indoors. There's lots of things that we can do. So let's focus on what we can do and not worry too much about the things that we can't. They'll take care of themselves. 
But if you do have worries, please, please, please share them with the adults in your family or the older members in your family. And boys and girls particularly, please remember your teachers, myself, Miss Frolin, Miss Natalia, we are all here to help you. And you've got our email addresses and you know how to contact us. So that's my letter A. My next one is the back to front L. And this stands for lovely activities. The best way for you to keep those worries in place at the moment is to fill your time with things that you love to do. Now is the time to search through your cupboards and find those games, those books and activities that you'd forgotten you even had. Or maybe the ones you never got round to actually doing. Make a list of the new things you want to try. There's lots of brilliant art and craft and music and sporty ideas online. It's a real chance to let your imagination take over and involve the whole family. Maybe use the alphabet. Take the alphabet. And for every letter of the alphabet, think of one thing that you could do. Write it down, fold it up, put it in a box, and every day we're going to take out one of those ideas and we're going to do it. Hopefully with your family or your family members, or maybe on your own. But it's a nice way of filling your time with lots of lovely things to do. So every letter of the alphabet, one activity, one idea, one thing that you could do, Put it in a box, give the box a shake, and every day you take out one thing. Maybe it's a good time to watch that favourite film or read a favourite book that you've never got round to reading. Being kind to yourself by doing things you love and treating others kindly is more important than ever. Doing kind things for people in your family will not only make them feel good, but trust me, it will make you feel good. So help with the dishes, help with the housework, help with the cooking. Ask your mums and dads and family members what you can help with and it will help to fill your time and it'll make you feel really good. What's Mr. Samuel doing with his? Well, somebody gave me this book not so long ago and said, Mr. Samuel, it's a really good read. But boys and girls, you probably will remember that I said to you in one of our assemblies in school that reading probably isn't my favourite thing to do. However, now I've got plenty of time where I've got to stay inside and it's quite a thick book with lots of small words. So I'm going to use this time to read my book. You also know that Mr. Samuel has been learning his ukulele. And so this is a really good time for me to get lots and lots of practice with my ukulele. And the other thing that I've started to do a little bit more of is photography. So I'm trying to use this time to get out there and do a little bit of photography. So think of all the lovely activities that you can do at this time and fill your time with those activities. It will take your mind off everything else and you'll have a great time doing it. The last letter is my M and it's called making the most of it. See, everyone is missing out on lots of things because of the coronavirus. Lots of us are feeling sad or we're feeling angry, we're feeling cross, we're feeling fed up, maybe even, maybe even a little bit frightened. And just about everything else is all very understandable. Everyone will be feeling this, like this from time to time. Doing something active like running or jumping or singing or dancing can help with all those strong feelings that you've got going on. We can also try to think about it in another way. Coronavirus has given us all the chance to do the things we don't usually get a chance to do. See, everybody in our beautiful islands is in the same situation. And actually, it's the same for everyone across the entire world. This is an important time in history and it will become a date everyone learns about for generations to come. How are you going to remember how you got through coronavirus in 2020? What will you tell people in the future when they ask you what it was like? Maybe even, yes, maybe even your own children when they grow up. Perhaps you could keep a special diary or a journal or create some sort of vlog of what you do each day that you can look back on in years to come and you can share with your family members when all of this settles down and goes back to normal. Now this brings me to my first challenge. The rainbow is seen as a symbol of hope unity and care for one another. You all know what a rainbow is, we see them quite often. In some parts of the world, 
People are drawing their ra- own rainbows and they're placing them in the windows for everybody outside to see. This is a beautiful way of everyone coming together. So, my challenge for you all today, draw yourself a rainbow. It can be as big, it can be as small, it can be as bright and colourful, it can be creative as you like. But take a few minutes today to draw yourself a rainbow. And then I want you to take that rainbow and put it in the front window of your house so that people passing by on the outside can see your rainbow. Just imagine how wonderful it will be if we could cover Cayman Brac and maybe even the Cayman Islands, all of the Cayman Islands, in beautiful rainbows. So that's my challenge for you today, boys and girls. Draw yourself a rainbow. Piece of paper is all you need and some pencils. If you don't have colors, it can be a black and white rainbow. Just shade each of the colors in slightly different. It will still represent a rainbow. Put it in your window of your house. If you can, take a photograph, put it on your mum and dad's Instagram and tag the school so we can all see your rainbows. And then as the police and all the the special services that are riding around and driving around the BRAC pass you by your houses, they will see all these wonderful rainbows. What a lovely way of us all coming together. So that's my challenge for today. Something like this. There you go. Okay. The other thing that I want to talk about, the other thing I want to talk about this morning is that this is our first virtual theme week. And what we're really keen to do is find ways of us all staying together as a school, particularly different at the moment because we're all in our homes and our houses and we can't come together in our school building, but we are still a school. We may not come together in a school building, but we are still a school and we're still together. And so this week we're doing what we call our first virtual theme week. And every day, we're doing something a little bit silly to add a little bit of fun into your day and to keep us all nice and close together. So today, for example, was our first day and everybody was supposed to take photographs of themselves wearing their comfy sweats or their PJs and upload it to mum or dad's Instagram and share it with the school um, so we can all see one another looking silly in our pyjamas. And if you've been on the school Instagram this morning, you will have seen Mr. Samuel in his pajamas this morning. So it's not too late, it's only half past eight with you. If you're still in your pajamas, take that photograph, upload it to mum and dad's Instagram and tag the school at West End Primary School. Tomorrow, we've got our inside out day and that means you have to wear your clothes inside out or back to front. It doesn't have to be all of them, but you have to put something on that's inside out or back to front. Take a picture, put it on mum and dad's Instagram, tag the school. Wednesday, it's wacky wear day. You can mix and match your clothes. Wear the silliest, craziest, wackiest outfit you've got. Picture, Instagram, tag the school. Thursday, (laughs) sorry parents, but we're getting you involved in Thursday. On Thursday, children, you have to wear your parents' clothes. Parents, try and wear your child's or an item of your child's clothes. Take photographs on your Instagram and tag the school. And on Friday, a typical Friday for us, you wear your Hornets and your Chargers outfit, you take a picture and you put it on the Instagram. So that's our first virtual theme week. We hope everybody gets involved. I know Miss Natalia is gonna send out a reminder in the mornings of what day it is and what you need to do. Um, But I do hope everybody gets involved and let's keep West End Primary School community Um, together despite the fact that we're not in the school building every day together so um, the first challenge for you is the rainbow into the windows of your homes and the second challenge is to join in with the virtual theme week as with all our assemblies boys and girls uh, mums dads and everyone else that's joined us this morning we're going to finish with prayer so I have a very short little prayer that I'd like to read Uh, please wherever you are take a few moments to bow your head close your eyes um, and just Take a few moments to think about everything that people are going through at the moment. Please join with me. Lord Jesus, you are a shield around me, strong in love, heavy with power, shaped with hope and gilded with truth. I will fear no evil, for you watch over me. You defend me and deliver me. In this day, this hour, this moment, I put all of my trust in you. Amen.
So, I hope you all enjoyed this morning's virtual assembly and, uh, and please remember just those key messages. Stay calm, create new routines, ask a grown-up if you have any worries, create some lovely activities for yourselves and make the most of this time. Don't forget to do your rainbows. Please try to complete all of the work that your teachers are sending home for you. And please remember, if you have any questions about your work or anything else that's bothering you, your teachers are there for you. Miss Froline, Miss Natalia and I are there for you. So please, please, please get in touch. Mums and dads, family members, that of course goes to you as well. If there's anything that we can help with, please get in touch with us um, and we'll do all that we can to assist. I look forward to seeing the work that everyone is doing this week. I am. Um, I keep uh, your te your teachers keep me informed. We have regular meetings ourselves on Zoom, and we share what's going on um, and how things are happening. So I look forward to seeing lots more of the work that you're producing, boys and girls. Uh, and I hope this is the first of our uh, virtual assemblies. We'll be doing another one next Monday. Um, so I do hope that you can join uh, join me again next Monday morning at half past eight when I will have something else to share. In the meantime, please have a wonderful day. Stay safe, everybody. It's been great chatting to you and reading some of your messages. Uh, so thanks for getting involved. And I will speak to you all at some point throughout the course of the week. Have a great week. Take care. Um, and I guess I have to press stop now. Bye, everyone.